Hello, my name is Luis Arias. Welcome to our Movement Disorder channel. I am a Movement Disorder Fellowship Trained Neurologist and Physical Therapist, currently located in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. These videos are to educate patients and caregivers uh, about Parkinson's disease and other movement disorders. Uh, today, we are going to talk about fatigue uh, in the setting of Parkinson's disease, which is a very common complaint in, in uh, Parkinson's disease patients. When I see a patient in the clinic, I typically ask, what is the main problem uh, at that moment? And many of them tell me fatigue has the main problem. And many times I see them having significant amount of tremors or dyskinesias. Uh, when I say dyskinesia, I mean uh, abnormal movement, like dancing-like type of movement, fidgeting, uh, and could be also abnormal posturing, head movements. Um, and still, they say that the main problem is fatigue. So this is what is actually bothering them significantly. Um, many of them um, will ask me, why do I feel so fatigued? Then I typically respond with more questions uh, to have a better understanding of what's, what's going on. But this is me asking them, uh, what do you mean with that? So then, do you feel sleepy? Can you stay awake? Because it's different feeling sleepy and having fatigue might be uh, combined, but that doesn't mean that, that they, they, those two terms are the same. Do you feel weak? Do you feel shortness of breath? Sometimes patients uh, tell you that they feel fatigue, but actually they are having shortness of breath because they have other issues such as uh, wheezing, um, asthma, that kind of things. Do you feel unmotivated? Do you feel sad, depressed, hopeless? That might cause actually fatigue. Is there any specific time during the day that you feel fatigue? Because this is important because um, it might actually be related with uh, off phenomenon. When I say off phenomenon, means that the levodopa, the retari or, or cinemet, is actually out of your system. So you might become fatigued um, and that means that you are off. So, the, so basically it depends on what you mean with fatigue is the management. There are two types of Parkinson's disease symptoms. The motor symptoms, this one here on the left, and the non-motor symptoms. The motor symptoms are the one that uh, that everybody pay attention, uh, everybody knows. Uh, but the non-motor symptoms are the one that people don't pay too much attention. Um, let's talk about a little bit about the motor symptoms. Tremors, which, which is the shakiness, uh, the stiffness or rigidity, the tightness of the, of the, of the muscle, uh, the slow movement, in medical term, we call that uh, bravi, kinesia and the postural instability or balance problems leading to walking issues. That those are the motor symptoms. The non-motor symptoms, there are many. Uh, for example, fatigue is a very common, a very common, approximately 50% uh, of the patient will complain of fatigue. Pain is very common too. The sleeping problem is almost universal, especially sleep fragmentation, depression, anxiety, uh, bladder issues, apathy. When I say apathy, I mean lack of desire of doing things that you used to do before. Uh, that doesn't mean that you are depressed. Might be um, uh, might correlate with depression as well, but uh, uh, not necessarily. Uh, you might feel uh, 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 with apathy, but that doesn't mean that you are depressed. And there are many others, uh, non-motor symptoms that we can discuss about that in other videos. Why non-motor symptoms are so important to discuss? Because they are very common. They are very common, especially fatigue. 
Uh, this is a very nice online survey in patients with multiple stages of Parkinson's disease, uh, published uh, 2020, uh, showing how common is fatigue when compared with other symptoms such as the slowness. You can see here that both of, both of these symptoms are very common, uh, approximately 90%. So um, Parkinson's disease is not just a, a disease uh, affecting your motor function, uh, affect uh, the whole system. Um, what is fatigue? So, well, um, fatigue is very common, as I, as I mentioned before, and, and everybody at some point in life will feel fatigue. Um, but the fatigue, the normal fatigue is different. And let me give you an example. When I was doing my internship in internal medicine many years ago, uh, we used to work uh, 80 hours a week. Um, so after working, imagine working 80 hours a week, nonstop, you will really feel fatigue, uh, mentally fatigue, physically fatigue. But I was able to recover. Uh, for example, if I sleep the whole Saturday, I was able to recover, so I was in good shape uh, the next day. Uh, this is different from people with, with Parkinson's disease. So the fatigue in the setting of Parkinson's disease, they don't actually improve with rest, which is different. Um, very important that you understand that fatigue is different from sleepiness. Uh, fatigue, uh, people with fatigue might feel sleepy, but not always. Very common, um, again, as I mentioned before, 50% of the patient with Parkinson's disease will complain about fatigue. However, this percent might change depending on which paper do you read. Um, one of the paper um, say that 33% uh, of those patients complaining of fatigue, they say that is the worst symptoms for them, is the most uh, disabling symptom. Interestingly, 80% of the patient of the Parkinson's disease patient did not have their fatigue recognized by their Parkinson's disease um, specialist. Um, other detail is a one, this fatigue could be one of the first symptoms uh, and it doesn't matter the duration of the, of the Parkinson. Different from daytime sleepiness that actually tend to get worse uh, through the years. What caused fatigue? The short end answer is, we don't know. And the problem is that we don't know because we don't understand the pathophysiology. Uh, we have some ideas, maybe it's because of uh, the motor symptoms like a tremors, uh, stiffness might contribute to making the muscle tired, maybe, or maybe because it's related with a non-dopaminergic pathway such as serotonin. Remember that in Parkinson's disease, you actually have low levels uh, deficiency of, of dopamine. Uh, however, you have other chemicals and that's why you have multiple systems uh, affected and multiple uh, symptoms. Um, there are some ideas that this fatigue might be related with a serotonin pathway. Serotonin is one of the chemicals in the brain that tend to be decreased in, in the setting of Parkinson's disease in addition to dopamine and, and other uh, chemicals in the brain. So this is one of the most important slides. You need to rule out, you need to pay attention um, to other um, symptoms that might guide you to diagnose secondary causes. For example, having thyroid problems, having um, hypothyroidism, uh, might, might make you feel very fatigued. Having anemia, um, having abnormal glucose level, high or low glucose level might cause you to feel fatigued. Or having actually elect electrolyte disturbance, like having a, a low sodium level. For example, patients taking water pills, they might become dehydrated, they might uh, um, eliminate more uh, sodium, so you might feel fatigue because you have an electrolyte disturbance. Also having nerve pain, we call that in medical terms, neuropathy, okay? 
you need to treat your neuropathy. You need to try to find out if, if number one, if to find out the cause of neuropathy, uh, if, if possible. Uh, also to treat your, um, if you have RLS, restless leg syndrome, because those conditions might affect your sleep pattern. So it's very important that you treat those conditions. Also medication side effects. Um, even the medication that we use to treat your motor symptoms, uh, such as, um, especially dopamine agonist, uh, uh, such as uh, pramipasol, uh, propinarol, those medications has a side effect, uh, might cause you to feel sleepy and, and indirectly or directly fatigue as well. So you might need to adjust those medications, maybe decrease or, or discontinue those medications. Um, so sometimes we need to check the list of medications that you are currently taking um, in order to find out, to help us to find out if they are related with your symptoms, such as fatigue. Sleep disturbance. If you don't, if you don't sleep well, for whatever reason, you will feel fatigue. Um, very important to rule out sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is extremely common in the general population and, and we have good treatment. Okay, uh, now in 2021, we had good treatment, so you cannot miss that. Uh, a sleep fragmentation is universal. So people don't have, people with Parkinson don't have too much problem falling asleep. The most, most of them, they will have problem um, staying asleep, um, waking up multiple times at night. Also overactive bladder. Overactive bladder is a very common phenomenon uh, when you get older and more when you have Parkinson's disease. Um, remember that the age is the most common risk factor for, for having Parkinson's disease. So, so you have age, Parkinson's disease, and then you have overactive bladder. If you have overactive bladder, you have to wake up multiple times a day, uh, at night to urinate. So that will affect your sleep pattern. So there are some patients, very lucky patients, that they can um, go to the bathroom and then they can fall asleep easily. But many of them... Uh, they cannot go back to sleep. So you need to treat those conditions. And we have good medication for that. Um, and some of the medication that we have for bladder, overactive bladder, um, they actually, many of them, the many of them might affect your cognition, your memory, your mentation, but some of them, they are not. Um, so we can talk about that uh, later in another video, how you treat overactive bladder in the setting of Parkinson's disease without affecting um, your memory. Um, depression anxiety is a big deal in the setting of Parkinson. Again, because this is, this is a disease that is not going just to affect the dopamine, it's affect all the chemicals in the brain, like um, serotonin. And the good thing about this is that patients with, with Parkinson, they actually tend to respond to anti-anxiety, anti-depression medication because there is a deficiency. So that's why you, you, you need to treat uh, those symptoms. If you treat anxiety and depression, you will sleep better. Um, technically, you should sleep better. Uh, people with depression and anxiety might wake up uh, in the middle of the night and they cannot um, go back to sleep. Uh, when you have too much anxiety, you are thinking too much at night. So your brain is running. <clears throat> also, very important and very uh, common uh, problem is uh, many people are out of shape, uh, which means uh, physical deconditioning. If you don't use it, you lose it. And uh, this, this happened not just in people with Parkinson's disease, also in the general population. Um, so you need to push yourself to do exercises. Um, we will talk about that in the next uh, slides. So what we can do? Number one, treat your underlying problems or secondary causes of fatigue. For example, if you feel depressed, you need to treat your depression. Your body will follow your state of mind always, okay? Treat your sleep problem. If you have nerve problems, if you have RLS, restless leg syndrome, you need to treat that. Otherwise, your sleep patterns are not going to get better. Treat your overactive bladder. Um, 
nocturnal symptoms. Uh, I'm talking about motor symptoms, uh, Parkinsonian type of symptoms. For example, some people cannot sleep well at night because they are off. They are off. So the levodopa, the medication that you take for Parkinson, he, is out of your system, out of your brain. So you will feel more stiff. So your mobility, normally when you're asleep, you move and you don't even pay attention to that, you're sleeping. But when you have a too much rigidity, that actually might wake you up. So one of the ideas uh, is to maybe using a long acting formulation like a CR or, a, or ER formulation, uh, that might help you with those symptoms. So uh, it's good to try to add a long acting medication uh, to see if that helps you. And uh, remember that in the management of Parkinson's disease is a lot of trial and error, okay? Not every patient is the same. And, and you as a patient uh, need to help us. So, so, so I mean that sometimes you need to try things. For example, let me try to take an extra pill at night to see what happened with me. Um, when I say extra pill, I mean carbidopa, levodopa, um, because that might help you, okay? So especially at night with those symptoms. Always talk to your doctor uh, before, um, if you can try that, but um, this is a trial and error. So again, if you find out that your fatigue is usually, assuming that you take the pill at the same time, but you are complaining of fatigue at the same time, always, that might be actually all phenomenal. So you might need to adjust your levodopa. Remember, when I say levodopa, we tarry uh, or, um, or cinnamon or duopa, if you have the duopa, the pump. So <clears throat> there are many ways that we can help. The only thing is that we need to find out the cause, if any, before blaming uh, Parkinson's disease uh, by itself. So a common question that I get in the clinic, do you have a medication for fatigue? Well, the problem is, as I mentioned before, we don't understand the pathophysiology uh, well. So um, we definitely might consider medication, um, but the successful rate is low in my experience. Uh, in other words, there are little evidence supporting specific medicine for fatigue in the setting of Parkinson's disease, except maybe uh, resangeline, um, which might help. And actually, uh, recent review of the data uh, by the Movement Disorder Society in 2019, um, they actually indicate that the resangeline is possibly useful. Uh, so I, I use it. I use it uh, a lot, um, especially in the setting of fatigue. I also use uh, the sister of uh, resangeline, which is salangeline, uh, 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 sal which is the sister. Because it's the same mechanism of action. The problem, the 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 difference is that uh, salangeline is metabolized in amphetamine. So te technically, my um, make you more awake. I rarely use uh, stimulants uh, such as Ritalin. Um, if I have uh, ten patients, um, I, I I don't think I have used uh, more than twenty times, and probably three of them might respond. Um, I don't have too much uh, good experience with uh, uh, Ritalin in the setting of Parkinson's disease, but sometimes you need, you need to try. Non-pharmacological treatment. So exercises is never a bad choice and it had been shown to improve fatigue, make you more energetic. The problem is that you have to do it and he's not doing it for one month and then you stop, and then you take vacation for two months, and then you start again. That doesn't work like that, okay? So you need to have a, a pattern. You need to uh, do exercises uh, at least five days a week, okay? At least five days a week. Obviously, you can start uh, maybe with two, three days and progressively uh, increasing, but, but exercises is like eating. It's just you need to have habits. And that's applied to patients without Parkinson.
So I find um, there are many ways to do exercises, but I actually find cycling a very safe way to exercises uh, in, the, in, in patients with Parkinson's disease, especially in trails and in groups, um, uh, stationary bikes. Um, there are many dif different styles. Um, I like uh, this one here, the tricycle. Uh, provide actually a safer, uh, more uh, secure alter alternative to traditional uh, bicycles. They have a recumbent seat, uh, giving more back support for those patients actually with, with back pain. Um, and it's a pretty, pretty safe. So other option that you have uh, is um, doing indoor pedaling for Parkinson's disease. Um, for example, here in, in Knoxville, uh, we have a uh, YMC uh, of East Tennessee. Uh, you can go to the website. Uh, I think uh, if you are a member, um, you pay five. Of, uh, it's free if you are a member. If not, you pay uh, five dollar per class. Uh, but just uh, try to um, go to the website and you will see the flyers and, and many information. But this is a good option for patients with Parkinson's disease. And there are many places that you can do um, cycling exercises in many places here. I like, I like to go to Sequoia Greenway, Cherokee Boulevard, um, very safe place uh, to, for, for biking, but there are many others. Um, <clears throat> for example, this uh, type of bike, uh, recumbent bike, um, are very common too, uh, and very um, safe for patients uh, with back pain, actually. Uh, they give you significant support. There are different prices. For example, this one is just uh, it's two hundred dollar. Might be um, lower than that, and some bikes that could be even five hundred, and some of them thousand. Uh, it, it, it depends. Uh, so, and, and there are many, many, many options. The important thing is that you need to do it, and uh, you you can start actually with ten minutes, ten minutes, uh, three times a, a day. Uh, for example, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, um, try to do it at the same time. I always recommend to do exercises in the morning because you tend to be more energetic in the morning, but that doesn't mean that, that you cannot do it at 4 p.m. or 3 p.m. Um, it depends. So the only thing is to be careful if you do it too late, it might affect actually your sleep because you are activating uh, your body. So you might, have, you might have some issues falling asleep. Um, but Again, every patient is different. Every person is different. There are some people don't have problem with that. You need to test your, 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 yourself. Um, I always recommend in the morning because I feel more energetic in the morning. Um, but that doesn't mean that apply to you. Um, but try to do it at the same time. Don't, don't, don't do it at 7 a.m. and then the next day at 2 p.m. Uh, because you need to have, a, in Parkinson's disease, you need to have a, a structure, a schedule. Otherwise, things doesn't work well. Um, and also don't, don't, you need to progress. You need to increase, uh, the difficulty of the, of the exercises. Uh, for example, every two weeks, you can increase by five minutes in terms of the time. Okay. With that goal of 30 to 45 minutes, maybe four to five times a week, but you can start out with three days per week and one day between just to make some time for a muscle to recover. In summary, non-more symptoms can have a great impact on quality of life, including fatigue. Tell your neurologist about your non-more symptoms. Speak up. We need to know. If you don't tell them, how can we help you? Make a list. I always recommend to make a list of three main problems um, before the appointment. Uh, this is very important. This will help you. Uh, just make a list. Otherwise, you will forget. Uh, be aware of the non-motor symptoms will be re related with an off time, off period, off phenomenon, which means that your levodopa is out of your system. So that's why sometimes we need to adjust your medication because fatigue might be an off phenomenon. Not always. Again, Evaluate for secondary causes before blaming just Parkinson's disease. Uh, for example, if you have a sleep apnea, you need to use a CPAP. You need to get treatment for that. Uh, 
you need to get evaluated for that. Otherwise, you fatigue. We are not going to get better. If you have RLS, you need to treat that. Making sure that you don't have iron deficiency, iron deficiency anemia has a secondary cause of RLS. Um, so that kind of things. Also, if you have nerve pain, you need our medication to calm down your nerves. And obviously also try to find out what is the cause of your nerve pain, of your neuropathy, if possible. Again, regular exercises is the universal treatment. Exercises is actually medicine. Very important that you do exercises and you be and to be consistent. You need to keep doing it. Otherwise, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. If you like this video, don't forget um, to, uh, to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.